We have created this online event that will reveal to members of the local, regional, and international press, press what, we, what the UAE hopes to present at Expo Milan 2015. We have also brought into this virtual space most of the individuals and organizations that are involved in the project. Let me start introducing uh, the people from the three locations. In London, at the headquarter of the architectural megastar, Foster Partners, we welcome Mr. Gerard Evenden and Martin Castle, together with, the, together with Peter Higgins, who is the head of Land uh, Design Studios, the company assisting us to create our exhibition. In Milan, at the beautiful Expo uh, uh, HQ building in the old city, we are, we are honored to be joined by Mr. Giuseppe Sala, Expo 2015 Commissioner General, who is accompanied by Her Excellency, the Consular General of the UAE, uh, Noura Jumma, along with uh, our own Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Abdullah al -Aydarous. Senior members of the Expo 2015 team are presently visiting the UAE, Mr. Stefano, Gatti, Director of International Participant, has joined us here in Abu Dhabi. And indeed, that brings us right back here to the capital of the United Arab Emirates, where we are talking to you from one of the most exciting cities in the world, named in Arabic, The Source. Mustar, is, Mustar City is indeed striving to create a new paradigm for every aspect of human endeavor, measuring its success in terms of sustainability. It is especially appropriate that Mustar is hosting on behalf of the National Media Council, the UAE DISC, at this webcast since it is deeply involved with the UAE Pavilion project, as you will hear shortly from its Director of Sustainability, Dr. Nawal al Hosseini. I'm sure that many of you will appreciate that the UAE Pavilion project is a major undertaking on, on behalf of the UAE government, combining many different specialties and fields of expertise. We are therefore fortunate to be led by Mr. Salam Al Amri, who as Commissioner General is involved in all aspects of the project and who brings to that task the experience of fulfilling similar role at Expo 2010 in Shanghai. Lastly, I would like to introduce Dr. Peter Vine, who has assisted us in various ways with the previous six expos and is the di and, and the project director for development of the UAE Pavilion in Milan. And I think I have to introduce myself. My name is Mubarak al Dahri, a member of the UAE Expo team, and I'm honored to be a moderator for this exciting event. In the next few minutes, we will talk with some of the key individuals associated with the project and will premiere a short film on the pavilion. In addition, you will be able to collect a press packs with news releases and images cleared for publication. Finally, if you have not already done so, please feel free now or later to submit your question via the website. We will, we will try to answer these questions uh, during the meeting and will answer others after the main session ends. And now I would like to, uh, and now I'd like to turn to Italy. And, set, and to set the scene before us. Expo Milan 2015, Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life. It is a bold theme, an ambitious goal. So Mr. Sala, as a Commissioner General for Expo 2015, there is probably nobody better qualified than yourself to tell us just what this project means for Milan, for Italy, and indeed for the world. Tell us something of the highlights and challenges that you face and just why the world eyes will focus on Milan in 2015. Mr. Sala. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be connected with you. Uh, virtually connected. We are in, in Milan in a, a very rainy day, so I hope in Abu Dhabi uh, or London the, the weather is better. Anyway, um, it is uh, the first time um, we, we see the launch of uh, a national uh, pavilion, that the launch of the national pavilion takes place uh, on the web. And I'm not surprised that uh, this, this launch is the uh, 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 Arab 
uh, Air United Arab Emirates, uh, we, we, we know the, your tradition uh, in, in diaspora and, uh, and we, are, we are following uh, your project. But let me, let me tell some few words about, about uh, our expo, because we are now 472 days and nights before the opening of the expo, because we are literally working uh, day and night. Um, and um, this year, as you can, you can imagine, the 2014 will be the fundamental uh, year for, for, for our run uh, to, the, to the opening of the Expo. Uh, we count uh, now 141 countries already confirmed their participation uh, to the Expo and uh, we are waiting for the uh, participation uh, uh, confirmed from the USA and Northern Ireland. So we are in a very positive situation. And uh, another consideration is that uh, uh, more or less uh, 60, 60 uh, countries uh, will build a, a, a known pavilion, a self-built pavilion. That is a record because in the, in, to, to, to give you an example, in the, the giant uh, edition in Shanghai, where most of the countries of the world were represented, uh, uh, only 42 countries uh, had uh, a self-built pavilion. So um, this, is, this is very positive and we consider that uh, this depends on some few reasons. Number one is our theme. Feeding the planet, uh, feeding the planet, and I will uh, uh, come come back later uh, later on the theme. But also, let me say the opportunity to be in Italy and to be in Milan, that is uh, uh, a wonderful city. Um, but, but some some few words um, on our theme: feeding the planet, energy for life. We consider that uh, it is uh, a fantastic thing because from a, a cultural and scientific point of view, uh, imagine uh, all uh, uh, is related to food security, but also to culture and society, but also to the, to, to the pleasure that uh, food uh, gives us. So, uh, according to our opinion, our opinion, there are so many reasons for which the people from every country in the world may be interested to, to our theme. Uh, and we are working uh, to be completely thematic. So we consider that uh, in the 21st uh, century, it is fundamental to work on a theme like, like ours to work on sustainability and uh, I believe that also we will come back uh, later but also your team I mean the the Emirates theme for 2020 goes uh, in this direction thank you Mr. Sala I think all of the nations who are participating uh, in the expo they will have their own unique story but tell me this what do you think of a country like the UAE, which is over 80% is desert, and it does not rain as much as Italy or Milan? What is it do you think that fuels Italians' uh, interest in the UAE pavilion or participation? We have um, a, a, a very important uh, interest in, in your participation and in, in your team that is uh, that is uh, related to, to a problem that is not a common problem in a, in a, in a part uh, of the world. Of course, uh, the Emirates uh, has a long tradition uh, in the, in the export, and uh, we remember the, your success in Shanghai and also your success uh, in, uh, in Yeosu. That is a reason for which uh, we consider the partnership with the Emirates one of the most important partnerships for us. There are some reasons. Number one is, I mean, uh, I was saying your tradition and your uh, 
capacity in, uh, in develop uh, uh, a wonderful project. And even from this point of view, the, your decision to, 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 to hire uh, the Norman Foster teams, uh, team uh, tells, tells a lot uh, about, about uh, your motivation. Uh, another, another reason is that um, the relation between our countries are, uh, are fundamental and even from a, a touristic point of view we, we believe that for your, uh, for your citizens uh, uh, Milan, uh, Milan may be very attractive, we, we see that uh, every, every year many visitors from, from your countries come to Milan, so they can be attracted for, from I mean, the history of the city, from the culture, for, from shopping, from uh, food and design, from, for, for many, many issues. But we believe that our city can be, can be very attractive. So putting together the ESP opportunity and, uh, and, the, and the, 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 the city of Milan, we, we, we believe that uh, uh, it will be it will be very interested for 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 your country then of course uh, we consider the opportunity to to pass the baton to to dubai a big opportunity for us even because i was saying uh, our theme that is feeding the planet and your theme and your theme that is connecting the, the minds uh, uh, may be considered a good interpretation for, for a new a new expo. You you know you know that for, for a long period Expo Expo the, f the first Expo was held in, in London in uh, in the 18, 1851 and for more than one century the Expo uh, tradition was based on the progress uh, on I mean the the, the Industrial Revolution on the or all the the news uh, that progress uh, was uh, was bringing to us now it is fundamental to work on uh, a different uh, sensitivity working uh, to work uh, on sustainability so that is the reason for which it, it is fundamental to to propose uh, uh, the new espos uh, choosing theme like our theme or your theme and, uh, and we, we, we believe that uh, a solid uh, legacy of our Expo could be, could be very useful uh, even for, for you. So we are, we are, in other words, we are ready to, we are ready, first of all, to, come to, to make our Expo and to, to have a, a very successful Expo, but then later on to, collabor to, to collaborate with you to guarantee, to, to, to support you in, uh, in, in the uh, in the target to have a, a, a new wonderful expo. Uh, I would like to ask Her Excellency Noura Jim'a a question. Since she was involved in Shanghai Pavilion, can you tell us your, your uh, opinion and how, how the UAE will participate in, in Milan from your point of view? Uh, well, Mubarak, let me first of all express how uh, fortunate I feel to have the great opportunity to experience uh, the Expo Shanghai. <coughs> and now to have this uh, chance to live Expo Milano 2015. <coughs> uh, well, our participation in Shanghai was really a great success. And uh, our pavilion was really special from the design to the content. And uh, everybody who has experienced Shanghai uh, 2010 agrees that, uh, uh, agrees on, on what I've just said, that our uh, participation was really, uh, was really uh, special. And uh, I think it was a great opportunity which was uh, uh, well used, not only to promote the UAE, but also to educate millions of visitors about our story, the story of our country, our history, and to give them uh, a clear picture about how we are uh, today. And we are all uh, looking forward for uh, Expo Milano 2015. And we expect the same uh, success, if not better, to be uh, this time. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency. Now I would like to turn to Mr. Salem Al-Amri. 
our own Commissioner General, whose vision and insight are so critical to the success of this project. What do you think are the key messages that are the UAE has to bring to this expo? Thank you, Mubarak. Uh, first of all, let me thank Mr. Saleh for being with us uh, today and sharing this moment with us. It's, uh, and let me uh, express the support uh, of the government and leadership of UAE uh, for this project. Uh, UAE government put a lot of investment in this project uh, to show how uh, committed we are. Uh, you asked me about the message we are sending there. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, when I first saw, uh, read the theme of, uh, of Expo Milan, I thought this is something very difficult for us. But then I th was thinking of um, remembering how our ancestors, our grandfathers, lived in this harsh environment and managed uh, to live here and fight, struggle for their, uh, to provide food, water for themselves. And then the whole message is, it is the story of UA, how we, the leadership, how the leadership of the country transformed uh, the country from that harsh past to what we are uh, in now. So I think we have a good story to say. Do you think the pavilion story in Milan will connect with the expo theme, touching the hearts of Italian and international vis visitors to the pavilion, from De your point of view? Definitely it will. Uh, I think we, can, we will grasp uh, the minds and hearts of the visitors, from, first from the design of, of the pavilion itself. And then once they are there, I'm sure our team are working on a on something <coughs> that is that the vis visitor will never forget. Okay, thank you, Salem. Uh, uh, we really appreciate your perspective. Uh, in general, I think you have touched on the importance of sustainability when you mentioned about our ancestors. Ancestors. Uh, I would like to turn now to Dr. Nawal Al Hosseini who is Director of Sustainability at Masdar, as well as being Director of the Zaid Future Energy Prize, Dr. Nawal. Most of us know a little bit about Masdar City and its high-level participation in the projects like Masdar Institute, World Future Energy Summit, Shams One, and other sustainable projects. Tell us, uh, tell us a bit about Masdar latest plan and how it is assisting the UAE Expo 2015 Pavilion team. Thank you, Mubarak. Let me first start by thanking you and by welcoming and saying hello to everybody from around the world who are with us today. Uh, I would like also to first congratulate the National Media Council for such an initiative. By streaming this event, not only we are reaching you know, many, many audiences around the world, but we are, as you mentioned, we are uh, reducing the environmental impact of this event dram dramatically. Uh, as as uh, Mr. Salim just mentioned, you know the theme of the pavilion, the theme of the Expo Milan Expo 2015, is in line with with the, with the UAE commitment to sustainability. We throughout the years, the UAE hasn't been only, hasn't been only a major supplier for energy for the hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons, but also now we are one of the most of the major suppliers for clean energy. We stand today at one gigawatt of clean energy that we are, we are basically producing uh, nationally and internationally. And if you allow me to speak about Mostar, of course, my favorite subject, mm -hmm. and we are very, very happy to host you here today at Mostar Institute in Mostar City. Uh, Mostar in 2013 had huge successes, and we advanced dramatically in many of our fronts. Mostar's uh, mandate, as you mentioned, is advancing renewable energy and sustainability uh, in the UN and internationally. So in, in March, we integrated Shams One that you mentioned. And Shams One is the largest 
cooperation and concentrate is for the power plant in the world and the first in the Middle East. We also have uh, inaugurated London Array, which is the largest offshore wind farm in the world. And we are basically generating enough energy to uh, uh, for more than half a million houses in the UK. We also uh, contributed to energy access uh, through energy access uh, projects in Mauritania and the Seychelles. Many, many other projects we are talking about renewable energy. Uh, back to Mustard City. Mustard City now, uh, in 2013, we doubled the size of Mustard Institute of Science and Technology, and we are having a bigger campus uh, where we are actually streaming from now as we speak. We also uh, have more than 100 companies uh, is being just and being part of the uh, one of the most green buildings in, in the world. And we have a lot of plans happening, and, and we are we'll be announcing them next week in the Autobi Sustainability Week, which is the second of the Sustainability Week, and which you mentioned, the World Future Energy Summit is part of. We also have the International the International Water Summit as part of the Autobi Sustainability Week, as well as the Ecoways. And the Zyde Future Energy Prize, I'm very proud and honored to say that on the 20th of January, we will be announcing the winners of the sixth cycle of the Zyde Future Energy Prize, which is a prize that promotes sustainability and rewards those who took bold initiative on sustainability. Our work with the, uh, with, uh, with, with the National Media Council and the support we have been receiving from you and our contribution to the design of the pavilion is something basically falls within our, uh, our mandate through all this experience and all this knowledge that we have gained throughout uh, Master Initiative, different elements of Master Initiative, but specifically designing and building Master City is totally in line with the theme of uh, and the objectives uh, of the sustainability of the, of the pavilion, of the Grand Pavilion. So you will see uh, as, and as we go through the different principles of the pavilion, you will see how much these principles are in line with the principles of Master City. You will see how uh, we are working to minimize not only water, but water mm -hmm. and energy demand within the pavilion. Of course, understanding and recognizing and respecting the needs of the pavilion. But we are also uh, using when, whatever is, is appropriate, uh, sustainable materials and recycled materials. We are also designing out waste throughout, from the planning through the operation of the pavilion where we are minimizing and reducing the waste. So it's it's basically a holistic approach that is in line with the way we, we are working with Mustard City. So we're extremely proud, we're extremely happy that we are supporting our part of this process. And you know, we are really looking forward to the continuity of the legacy of the Milan uh, Expo 2015 by bringing back our pavilion to be hosted here in Mustard City. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your answers, Dr. Nawal. And we have seen that at first hand, just how professional Mazdar is in this uh, field and how determined it is that our pavilion should have the smallest carbon footprint possible. I'm now pleased to reveal for the first time in public just what the UAE has to store for visitors to Expo Milan, Milan 2015. Uh, this is a short film tells the story of what we have been doing over the last 12 months and where things are heading. Just keep in mind that it is a work in progress. In the future, Will it be possible to ensure sufficient, good, healthy, sustainable food for all mankind? It's an important question. The UAE Pavilion at Expo 2015 explores some of the answers to this question under our central theme, food for thought. Sharing our insights about food, nutrition, energy, and sustainability. Our story reflects values and experiences shaped by a remarkable transformation from desolate landscapes to a thriving cosmopolitan nation. This drives four simple organizing principles. Sustain, care, innovate, share. The UAE's National Media Council has assembled a world-class team to deliver a unique pavilion experience. 
dealing with some light protection. But before creating anything, we wanted to understand our audience a little better. Being Italian, wow, it's difficult. They're so happy, they love to live. A friendly, open, elegant. We do a lot of things with heart and with smile. And we spend a lot of time talking about food. When Italians meet, they eat. It's not just food, it's a way of life. We prepare together, we eat together, because I think we are the best. What do you see? Now let's look at our architectural vision. One of the issues that's generated the approach to the design is the nature of the site, which is very narrow and very long. The other driver, of course, has been the materiality of the building. Um, driven by low carbon materials and striving for very high environmental goals. 12 meter high walls form a striking entrance, enticing the audience to explore the pavilion. Very early on in the discussions, the idea of being inspired by, by sand, um, not only as a material to be used, but also what happens to sand, particularly in, in the effects of dunes and rivulets that get sort of formed by the wind, which produces a, these incredibly beautiful curvilinear forms. Foster and partners took inspiration from the landscape and architecture of the UAE, and specifically the low carbon city of Mustar, producing a design to wow visitors and also to satisfy the requirement for the pavilion to be demountable and rebuilt in the UAE. The audiovisual journey through the pavilion will be enthralling. It will be interactive. It will be both educational and entertaining. It will give the audience a fascinating and thought-provoking view of the UAE and its role in the global future of water, food, conservation, energy, and sustainability. It all starts off at the dramatic entrance to the pavilion, where Emirati hosts hand over a tablet, an interactive device that enables the visitor to choose their own language. They then use this to explore the entrance experience. As they weave their way up the sinuous ramp, they have intriguing views of things ahead of them, and they're able to investigate clusters of objects on their journey. Each of the objects has a story to tell. As you hold the tablet against the object, it appears on the screen. It springs to life. It's almost magical. Visitors will also see an intriguing 75 meter long moving video display running down the center of the ramp, a digital phalange, which is in fact a traditional irrigation channel. This is the tablets being returned back to the entrance. Shade and rain protection are provided by an elegant canopy guiding them to a rest area. Here, the Emirati ambassadors will have the opportunity to interact with our visitors, offering traditional hospitality, sharing life experiences, and telling stories before they enter the central drum for the main show. And it's here that we have a complete 360 degree projection and lighting rig. And it's where we find the film, which in fact is the emotional heart of the whole pavilion. At the end of the film, the audience will have rotated 180 degrees, providing an unexpected entrance to the second half of the show, called Future Talk, inspired by the world-renowned TED Talks phenomenon. Visitors are now standing in a media-rich, immersive environment using a whole range of visual effects, including full-size virtual presenters who will interact with real objects. And layered between them, we'll have animated 3D graphics. Linking to our four main themes, the two Emirati presenters discuss initiatives that are surprising, challenging, and inspiring. Our visitors then enter an oasis, a natural area of calm to eat, relax, and discover more about food in the UAE. The overall food offering, so important to the pavilion's theme, is found on three levels. A ground floor, quick snack cafe, a first floor restaurant including a show kitchen, and on the top floor, a roof garden with a juice bar, offering views of the pavilion. This will be spectacular at night when it is bathed in lighting effects. 
A special exhibition area beneath the drum will house exhibits and food-related special events that will change throughout the time of the expo. So by the time they leave the pavilion, they will have had a completely unique experience. And it's something that we think will really impress and excite our visitors. Thanks to our media team for that film, which gives a pretty good idea of what we are trying to do. And thanks to the great architectural and exhibition team at Foster Partners and Land Design for taking us uh, this far. I think now we have to build the, the pavilion, as simple as that. And that brings us back to London, where Foster Partners, senior partners, Gerard Evenden, is sitting in one of the most companies which I personally visited next to the iconic river. And uh, Mr. Gerard, can you tell us a bit about how Foster Partners views Expo and our own pavilion projects? Do they create any excitement in your vast creative empire? Thank you, Mubarak, and it's great to be here and connect to this session, um, both in Italy and Abu Dhabi. Um, and it's great for us to be sitting here once again with another model of a, of a pavilion for the UAE's Expo and uh, one that we will hopefully transform shortly into reality for 2015. Um, I'm pleased to say that uh, we're working in both locations, both Italy and the UAE, and in particular Abu Dhabi. Um, of course, we're still working uh, with Mazda City, uh, developing the city, and are now also working on, very proud to be working on the uh, uh, new Sheikh Zayed National Museum to be built on Sadia Island. But um, we're here to talk about Expo. Mazda uh, has great relevance to our work on the Milan Pavilion, pavilion and uh, make it both sustainable and transportable back to Abu Dhabi when the Expo is complete. Having successfully completed the Shanghai Pavilion, the design in Milan was a different challenge. The covered roots which form the spine of the expo forces the ground, uh, forces the experience at ground level. Um, the site centrally located in the, in the expo itself, uh, as you come to our pavilion you move through a narrow canyon a canyon-like route which draws you in and draws visitors in, uh, which is inspired by the dunes and the natural landscapes of the UAE. The narrow streets uh, reflect the scale of the streets in Mazda and once again controlling the solar access. This will become even more relevant when the pavilion gets relocated back in Abu Dhabi at the end of the, of the expo period. The walls on either side are 12 metres high and lead you through a revolving auditorium into the post-show and eventually down past the restaurant and into a small oasis of landscape. To one side there's a special exhibition space as you begin to exit and on the final exit there's a grab-and-go grab uh, restaurant experience before you, the visitor moves on to the next pavilion. So, um, I think it's back to you, Mubarak. Thank you, Gerard. We, re we really do appreciate all your team efforts for this project. And I was, was, I was just wondering if Martin has to add anything to your comments. Yeah, I think, I think for us, um, working on the UAV Pavilion projects is uh, very exciting. Uh, they're very uh, quick to be built. And uh, the team that I work with are uh, lots of energy and uh, really enjoy it. Um, this, this pavilion differs a little bit from the, uh, the one in Shanghai in that we have a food offering. It's very exciting for visitors to be able to come to the pavilions and try different types of food from all over the world. Um, and the UAE pavilion actually has three, three types of food offering. Um, on the lower level, which Gerard mentioned, is, is serving the, the large numbers of visitors coming out of the pavilion. So it's, it's, it's quick. So everyone gets an opportunity to try some Emirati cuisine. And then we have more an immersive experience on the first floor. Um, and then on the top level, we have a roof terrace. So that's going to provide views um, 
to the Oasis space, but also to the adjacent square, and hopefully we get some views across the Expo Park itself. Um, but not only in terms of offering food, we also have to think about how the building uh, supports that facility. So we've got some uh, roof gardens which help provide the food for the, for the restaurants. And we also have to provide a lot of back of house facilities. So it's, it's a lot more, more complicated than the, uh, than the Shanghai one. While we are in London, Peter Higgins, you have been leading the design of the exhibition and working very closely with Fossa Partners, keeping in mind the visitor's experience. How has that worked and what do you feel are the highlights of the show? Um, I think uh, I've been fascinated by Expo experiences over many years. Um, as, as, as you said earlier, we, we started the whole Expo movement in 1851. It's very close to my heart. I visited many Expos and, and actually worked on a couple of pavilions. So when, um, and as communicators, as storytellers, which is what we do, um, the most exciting thing for us was when we were, we were invited to work on a truly, really, truly integrated solution with Foster and Partners. We, we started day one together with a, a sheet of paper, and I think that's incredibly unusual. And, um, and believe me, it doesn't happen very often. So the, the total, truly integrated experience is what we are about to deliver. Um, working with this fantastic architectural form, it's in fact, we've been able to collectively, I think, make it a, a, a really a, a mechanism, a communicate, commu communication mechanism, as well as a beautiful piece of architecture. Um, and the visitor will effectively never feel as though they're in a queue. The whole experience is controlled from beginning to end, um, although it's told in three parts. We're in, in control of that sequence, but uh, the visitor will never know how we're managing it. It will just be, as far as they're concerned, an entertainment experience. The centerpiece um, is, is really drawing on the, on the experience the UAE pavilions have had in the past with their fantastic success of making very emotional um, film experiences and, and we're going to use that again as, as the kind of heart of the whole pavilion. Um, as you've seen from the film we're, we're actually using uh, digital technology in, t technologies in really innovative ways, in ways that nobody's ever used them before, the way we're using the tablets and other things that we have up our sleeve. so that's very exciting. And just to come back to, um, to the whole Expo um, phenomenon, which is what it is, and, and we have to take the theme here extremely seriously. This, this is, we are dealing with the future of a sustainable world. We do take it very seriously, but our job is, I think, to entertain and pass our messages on in a very coherent and fun way. We can use the word fun and we can use the word serious. Because what we have to do is we have to encourage our visitors to become ambassadors. Ambassadors of the very important Expo message and also ambassadors of what the UAE will bring to the way the world is approaching these huge issues. We want people to come and visit the UAE themselves and, and understand what's going on. So um, clearly for us, this is an extraordinary experience and, um, and we're, we're sort of halfway there, but um, it's great fun. Thank you, Mubarak. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. And indeed, and Gerard indeed. and Martin for those insights. Before we close the main session and look at some of these questions that are flooding in via, via the website, I would like to hear from the Director of International Participant for Expo 2015, Mr. Stefano Gatti, who has been sitting patiently listening to the rest of us. And uh, we've heard enough, uh, a lot of things from uh, Mr. Salah. Is there anything you would like to add, Mr. Stefano? I think that, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mubarak. I think that looking uh, also at the uh, incredible video of uh, and what is the, the project that uh, the EU Pavilion is, uh, is taking, um, we can say this. Normally, uh, the Emirates, the United Arab Emirates, comes. Uh, with uh, the top pavilions at the Expo. We are used to this, so this is not a surprise, even if we know that every day is difficult to repeat this. Uh, 
Um, we are now uh, have received uh, around 23 projects of pavilions from uh, uh, countries that are participating. And I must say, obviously, the one we are seeing today ranks as definitely one of the best ones, but they are all very good. So the message I want to give to you and to the Commissioner is that you aim for a very tough competition. We are extremely happy of this, obviously, as organizer of the Expo. Um, but uh, uh, we have to, uh, we will have a wonderful expo where all the pavilions will, will be this kind of positive competition between the pavilions to deliver that kind of uh, visitor experience that I think was very well uh, uh, summed up now from the intervention in Foster Partners. We have uh, to be serious because the theme is serious, very important. Uh, An expo is about the education of the public, uh, but we have, have also to provide fun. Without that, we will not have the 20 million visitors now, and you won't have the many millions of visitors that you're looking for for Dubai 2020. So it's really the way in which you mix this together and have the right kind of recipe, the kind of result is uh, the key to the success of the pavilion. And uh, we are sure that uh, the one of the Emirates will be really a wonderful one in our way. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Stefano, and we can assure you that it's going to be one of the best pavilions. And that more or less that wraps more, that the wraps formal section of this conference. And now we would like to turn, uh, we would like to, to tackle a couple of questions, challenging questions which has been submitted via the website. I would like to pass it to Mr. Peter to address these questions. Peter. Thank you, Mubarak. Um, we're, we're moving on. We don't have lo long enough to answer all the questions that we, we've got. I've had, while we've been sitting here, questions have been coming in over the internet um, but so we'll move on quite quickly and those questions we can't manage to answer now uh, we can answer after the event um, first question then is um, uh, from a journalist in the UAE and I, I think it should be addressed by Abdullah al Roos in, in who's sitting in Milan and it says please ask Abdullah whether the UAE will be bringing Emirati volunteers to Milan my son is learning Italian just so he can have this experience. So, Abdullah, what do you say to that? Of course, uh, our, our um, volunteers from the uh, organization called Takato, they are one of our team, they are one of our success because uh, it is, uh, the pavilion is uh, even image or movies and technology, but the visitors, they want to meet the Emirati people, girls and boys, they will help us to tell, ask, answer him the question they are asking. Okay, of course, there will be the volunteers there and let them learn Italian language. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Abdullah, and, and I agree. Uh, the, the volunteers are really the heart of the whole expo. And uh, we've been, you have done an incredible job in the past of gathering these volunteers and, uh, and helping them to provide such a great show. Uh, the next question I've got uh, relates to uh, very closely to the theme of Expo. And uh, somebody's asking Will the pavilion offer Emirati food to visitors? Um, that's a tricky question. I think we'll pass it to Salam Al Amri. Uh, definitely, it's, it's a the whole theme is about food, so we are preparing something. Uh, so we are preparing something. Uh, I think the vi the visitors will not only enjoy the food, but they enjoy the experience. Uh, we'll have a restaurant, as you heard in the in the, in the video, uh, a three-level uh, restaurant. Uh, we think it will com complete the whole experience of of, of the visitors, and. Let's hope they will enjoy it. A question from Josie D'Angelo, uh, who says, at the Shanghai Expo, UAE showed a beautiful film. Will this also be available in Milan? It shows the beautiful history of the UAE. Well, I'm very familiar with that film, uh, and thank you for the comments about it. Uh, and I'll answer the question, no, it won't be uh, part of the exhibition I think the film you're talking about is, uh, is probably called In the Blink of an Eye, and it told in a very uh, sensitive way the story of the UAE, and it really touched people's hearts in China. Uh, well, 
you know, we'll have a, we'll have a different show, but we may well uh, make a, ac give access to the previous films that we've done. And in fact, on our website, you will be able to, to access that and other films. Um, a similar question. Uh, the Turtle has drawn considerable praise from critics and visits alike during Yosso Expo 2012 in Korea. Will you have a similar film for Milan Expo to impress visitors to the UAE Pavilion? I'm sorry I'm ho hogging this question and answer session, but I'll answer it as well. Uh, yes, that's what we intend to do. We, we will have a similar film. Um, the other question we've got here is relates to um, Mazda, I think. And it basically says, what role is Mazda playing in the uh, in the exhibition, that, in, the, in the pavilion that we're we're making, um, apart from telling the story, Mazda's story is part of our theme and part of our content development. We had a content team here in, in here in Mazda yesterday. Uh, but what is Mazda doing to help us uh, create an incredible pavilion? Well. Uh, as I mentioned, we were very honored to be part of the uh, of, of the expo team. So we helped in the design process. We helped with bringing insights from the uh, sustainability principles that we we learned through designing and building Master City and the different buildings in Master City and specifically Master Institute where we are in today. Uh, not only that, but also we are supporting in the design of the uh, program and the operation of the pavilion moving forward. So to ensure that not only we are minimizing the embodied carbon of the building through the, through the through design principles and minimizing the consumption of both water uh, and energy through design, but also designing out waste and reducing of, uh, of the uh, operational waste. Also looking at the carbon. So we, we are measuring all the carbon uh, emissions related and associated with building and delivering the expo and with, uh, with with the teams and the colleagues with the, with the National Media Council, we're looking into ways to offset this this uh, this carbon and uh, retire the, the the credits through CDM project that has been developed in the UAE. So we are looking, uh, we are supporting the, the expo team through the design and the operation and reduction of the overall uh, embedded carbon and the operational carbon of the pavilion. Thank you very much for that, and I, I'm really pleased to hear it because we had a, a, a meeting prior to this uh, conference this morning in which we were being reminded of our responsibility in the sustainability oh. field by Mr. Mr. Stefano, uh, and I assured him that uh, we, w we were going to be as sustainable as you can be. Uh, and, and it is a great opportunity uh, to show what can be done. Um, and I know that uh, when we first went to Expo in Milan, one of the things that most interested the people in Italy in Milan was Mazda City and what Mazda is doing. And so this opportunity to have Mazda's input to the pavilion is really, really fantastic. I think one of the important elements also is uh, is not only the the building, but what's going to happen what's going to happen to the pavilion after. Uh, it finishes its role at the expo. So for this pavilion to continue this legacy and come to be built in Mustard City and continue uh, sharing the, basically all the lessons learned and, and sharing the experience and become a visitor center to Mustard City. And that's why we make sure that sustainability is incorporated through every element of the building because you know we, we do have our own standards here in Mustard City and we would like to maintain the sustainability of the building when it comes back to its permanent home at Mustard City. Well, we will then have three, U, uh, three UA pavilions uh, will be in the UA. The Shanghai Pavilion, the 2015 Pavilion, and of course the UA Pavilion for Dubai 2020. Absolutely. So the UA is really going to be uh, at the heart of, um, of, of that, and it's going to interest a lot of people. Uh, another question uh, from uh, somebody called Marina Fanis. And it says, is there a plan to have an exchange of experience between you and UAE and Italy Milan to capitalize on what can be done there? Sam, do you have any comments on cultural exchanges between Italy and the UAE using the Expo project? And it's really at the heart of what the whole, we were talking this morning about uh, public diplomacy yeah. being at the root of what we're doing. 
uh, and you were saying that this is absolutely core yeah. to this is, this is what all uh, Expo is about. It's, it's, uh, it's about engaging. Yeah. It's about uh, uh, exchanging. Uh, and I think there's a lot of opportunities uh, in uh, Milan and Dubai. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll use UA uh, uh, Pavilion as a, uh, a stage on how we can uh, exchange expertise between uh, Italy and UA. And I'm sure uh, the organizing committee in Dubai will welcome any kind of expertise from Italy. May, may, may I say some, uh, some few words on that? Um, and uh, let, let, me, let me use uh, what Peter Regis uh, said. More or less, uh, he said, uh, we are very seriously taking the theme, but we know that we have to entertain, but we know that we, are giving, we must give fun to the people. And that is the, the spirit of, uh, of the ESPO, and that, that is the, the philosophy on which uh, we are working. Uh, one question was related to food. And uh, let, let me give you an, a little example on that. Normally, the, the ESPOs uh, close uh, or 7 or 8 p.m. And, and open uh, in the morning uh, again, 8, 9, 9 a.m. Well, we are, we are deciding to, to work on, the, on, a, on a concept, on an idea to, to keep open uh, even during the night, not the pavilion, but I mean the, the, the general environment, the site, uh, working on entertainment and asking uh, the countries uh, to keep open the, re the, resta the restaurant. So the, 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 the idea is that we, 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 we tell the people, please come to the, during the night, you can, uh, you can taste, you can appreciate the cuisine of everywhere in the world, and you will see the architecture, to give an example, and you will be motivated to, to come back to the the day, the day, the day after to, to see the pavilion. So that, that is, has to be the spirit. Because in principle, the real scope for which uh, ESPO is done and uh, ESPO uh, means a lot, uh, even in the 21st century, is to educate. So, but we know very well that the, the only possibility we have is to working on the ed on a, a, in a edutainment concept so to educate, but working on a, on a very, 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 very um, easy, easy way. That is the spirit, and, uh, and we believe that we will be in condition to, to give a, a good interpretation to that, and then to pass, to pass the baton to, to Dubai, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and most probably they will, uh, will work on, 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 the same, uh, on the same idea. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sala. Uh, there's time for w one more question before we close the session. And uh, it's a very short question. Uh, it basically says, what will be the highlight of the United Arab Emirates Pavilion uh, show? And I think for this, we should turn back to Peter Higgins in London uh, and maybe Gerard to give their comments on what they think visitors visually and uh, visual impact what, what, what's, what's it going to be? No pressure, please, sir. Gerald? <laughs> I, think, I think that it, this is a, it's a unique experience. I think moving through the route and moving through the shows is going to be uh, something which is very, very special. I think the second that you move into the pavilion, uh, you're in a place, um, and it's a world of its own. Um, and for that moment, as you move through, you will be in the UAE and immersed totally in it. And I think combining the architecture and the, uh, and the, the, the various uh, entertainment, edutainment activities that are going on inside, uh, as you come out of the pavilion, you will feel that you've been there. And I think, I think Peter, what, what we're attempting to do here is to create a whole new uh, typology of visitor experience. 
Um, it's nothing like anybody's visited before, and we want people to go away from this pavilion, as I said, as ambassadors, saying, you've just got to be there, you've got to be a part of it. It's a sense of the, the power of the real, if you like. It's being there, which is terribly important. In the age of the virtual, which we're using as well, with all the online work we're doing, and what we're doing now, it's reminding us of the power of the real. Those uh, visitors to this webcast who uh, have got a general impression from the film, uh, and if they want to write more about it, they will be able to get information uh, on our website um, in terms of uh, press releases and photographs and so on. Um, I think now I'd, that's the end of the questions. I'd ask Mubarak to, to close the meeting. Okay. Thank you, Peter, and indeed thanks to all participants in this groundbreaking webcast. For, the, for those of you who, who has joined us uh, lately, you can find all of the information, the videos, the press release, on our uh, website, which is www.expo2015uae.com. And if you have any question or suggestion, you can uh, uh, send it to our, web, uh, to our website and we will do our best to answer these questions. And we hope to meet you or see you at Expo Milan 2015. Thank you all. The Universal Exposition. It is a global event with a high educational content, which focuses on one specific theme. The first Expo took place in London in 1851, while Paris built the Eiffel Tower for the occasion in 1889. Today, after more than a century, the ideals behind Expo remain unchanged. The aim is to diffuse knowledge, improve human living conditions, facilitate meetings between people, and help cooperation between states. Expo takes place every five years. Each country puts together a pavilion relating to the theme of the Expo to highlight its scientific achievements and cultural strengths, its products and traditions. Today, more than 130 countries have confirmed their participation in Expo 2015. Feeding the planet energy for life is the theme of Expo Milan 2015, the universal exposition which will be located in Milan. Feeding the planet energy for life will tackle two fundamental issues of the third millennium, how to create the conditions in which to provide sufficient and healthy food for mankind, and how to guarantee sustainability i.e., how to maintain the delicate balance between man, land, water, and air. Throughout the exhibition, visitors will be shown many different topics, from agriculture to science, from nutrition to environmental issues. Expo Milan 2015 will be a voyage through history and the future, a fascinating tale of topical journeys, scientific and artistic events, but also one of games and education for young adults and children. Visitors will be taken through areas dominated by water, trees, and environments representing each continent, and the most modern technologies used to enhance our quality of life. The pavilions will display tendencies, lifestyles, and traditions from the different continents, and aim to steer humanity towards more virtuous practices regarding agriculture, nutrition, and environmental issues. Expo Milan 2015 will also be a place where scientists, governments, technicians and businesses worldwide can envision a sustainable world where nature and development, innovation and tradition are linked together. Food quality and safety represent the future of humanity and a guarantee for world peace. The message that Expo Milan 2015 wishes to convey to the planet is the importance of fighting hunger in the world, of eradicating the causes of incorrect nutrition and how to prevent the increase of new social illnesses linked to overeating.